Hi, welcome to the catch up. Catching up with an old friend who was on the catch up way back when. This is Georgia Caney. And she's still in Singapore, yes. <laughs> I think a lot of the experts are deciding what to do la. Do we go back? Do we stay here? Do you not miss home? Of course, so much. It's been about almost two years since I've been home. How come you've decided to still stay on? Are you afraid you cannot come back? I don't want to quarantine. Ah, yes. I don't want to pay to quarantine. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're just going to wait and see? Correct. Yeah, well, the rules keep changing, so I yeah. think that might be the prudent yeah. way to go. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about something that came up in the news, I think, last week. Have you been to a Singapore wedding? Yep. A Chinese wedding or a Malay yeah, wedding? Chinese. Okay, so if you've been to a Chinese wedding, you know that it's the banquet and it's quite elaborate and that we give red packets. So, this guy, he had people RSVP, but they didn't show up. And if you've ever planned a wedding, um, it is a pain. You will know that if you don't show up, you still pay for the seats. Right, so let's say you RSVP for my wedding and you didn't show up, I would still have to pay the hotel for your seat. Right. So he's very upset. So he invoiced all the people who didn't show up but who had RSVP because this was the cost of your seat. Okay, so it was interesting because the internet had very different views on this. Okay. Like some people say it was in really bad taste to do that. But other more practical Singaporeans are like, yeah, well, if you weren't showing up, just say you weren't going to show up. Why would you say you show up? And then you, you know, in the end, we have to pay for the seat. Sometimes the Singapore etiquette is you're invited and you can't make it, you would give that red packet anyway. And it's not like a little bit of money, you would give the exact red pa packet that you would give had you attended the dinner. I just wanted to get your views on this. Well, I think from a Western perspective, it would be like we have control over what we can afford to have wedding-wise. You know, I'll have a wedding that's within my budget. I'm the one having the wedding, so I'm responsible for the cost of the wedding. I would rely on the guests to... <laughs> <laughs> make up the numbers. Contributing and make up the numbers. It seems a bit ma much, doesn't it? To invoice your guests. <laughs> well, that, is, that does seem a bit much. But what if in the case where you thought you could go for a wedding and you had actually RSVP and then you can't go, what do you think of the practice of, you know, people giving a red packet anyway? I suppose in Singapore, I feel like I was obliged to do that because that is the custom. Do you think it's the custom? If you didn't show up, would you I don't know. feel obliged to do that? I think that's why I also, I also want to know from you guys because yeah. generally for me, if I can't go, I would just say I can't go yeah. and then that's it. But I think that if it's a last minute no show, Correct. it kind of is the custom because the couple would have to pay for your seat. So the, the, the local style is like, okay, for example, let's say I invite you and you, you can't make it, you know you can't make it, right? Yeah. So you say no and then I would replace your seat with someone else. Correct. Right? If, if they're letting him down last minute, yes. it's quite, it's not very nice. Have you been to many COVID weddings? Have you been to any COVID weddings? No COVID weddings. No co I went to a Zoom wedding. No, you never. I did. My cousin got married on Zoom. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Actually, I don't know. You know what? Last year, a friend got married, but they put it on Zoom because they were they wanted to show their parents back home, right? And I did watch it from Singapore, so actually, I suppose that was a bit of a COVID wedding. That was. That yeah. was. What do you think is an appropriate amount if you're invited to a wedding? Do you look at the police? Don't you? Yeah, there's an app, right? Yeah. So, you. Wow, you are so local. Oh my <laughs> gosh. So do you look at the app if you're invited I to? I did when I went to the wedding. Okay. Um, <laughs> just because I was like, I'm going to have to do as the locals do. Okay. Um, but in the UK, you would never turn up to a wedding and give money. I don't think anyone comes up with a list of stuff that they want and then you buy it. Like, you just give them a gift or, or maybe some money out of goodwill. But like, it's not mandatory and they certainly won't judge you if you did do it. Really? So it's because you're expecting your guests to buy new outfits, travel there, which in the UK is a yep. hassle, stay overnight in a hotel. Yep. Like we're paying to come to a wedding in that sense. So as someone like throwing a wedding you wouldn't expect like so, you you coming to my wedding is, is enough. It's almost like a birthday party, right? Yeah. Nobody expects And a no gift. one's at the door like writing <laughs> down if you've given your red packet. Oh yeah, was that was that new for you? For me, yeah. Like we put it in the box yeah. and then they ask your name. And then they tick off Georgia, like, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Imagine if I didn't. They would know. They would know. They'd be giving me a call. They'd be invoicing me. <laughs> Let us know what you think about weddings, you know, on this invoicing thing. Uh, whether you should RSVP and still give an ang pao even if you didn't uh, show up or whatever. And uh, yeah, catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.